Are you ready? <laughs> yep, I guess so. That's us. That's us. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. We were supposed to do this yesterday. Yeah. But you couldn't. I could. Oh, you could? Let's not pin I don't, this no, on I don't me, remember. Bucko. I don't remember. I really honestly don't remember. It was you. What happened? I came in yeah. to the city and I Ubered in. Oh, you wanted me to drive you home. I couldn't. It didn't it even up getting, matter about that. Late. You said you were very busy. You had to make it home. It wound up getting late. No, I had a lot to do. I'm yeah. sorry. Anyway, it's fine. So we're now here we're today. Here. It's fine. But I wore my, I, we, I thought we were recording yesterday, and I wore my Iowa corn shirt. Yeah. Because I wanted to talk about my corn. And oh, okay. You were just going to talk about your corn. Yeah. Why? What did you think I was going to talk about? Nothing. Nothing. Between chips references and the Iowa situation, every one has to be mentioned every episode. It wasn't a situation. Of either bull chat or serial killers. I just all I wanted to talk about is how disappointing it was to nurture those corn stalks. Mm-hmm. And first of all, they only yielded six cobs. <laughs> and <clears throat> I think that's the proper farming term. Yield. Yeah. And um pardon me. <clears throat> you got a tickle in your throat. Sorry buddy? about that. Yeah, I did. And so I picked them. Or harvested them, and they were mediocre at best. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to, there, there's also stuff to do with the soil, you know? We have crappy soil. Yeah. My garden is full of weeds. It's overtaken by weeds. Um, the husks looked really good, though. Like, the corn itself, when you showed me your corn in your backyard, <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a lot of, that's yeah. some corn. I mean, the corn looked great. It was, it was white corn, yeah. which usually would be sweet, mm. and... It's very possible that, A, I didn't leave it on the grill long enough, and B, it was just crap corn. I mean, I might have bought, instead of sweet Long Island corn, I might have bought, like, feed corn. Uh, you know, like, oh. the stuff they give to <laughs> horses and pigs and stuff? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, whatever. It was the the thrill of growing my own produce. I mean, I, I, I'm experimenting with bamboo right now. Um, I have three giant bamboo plants in my parents' backyard yeah. that they were letting me grow. I told and you, you got to be careful with that. Well, I hope it the be careful part comes in soon, because let me tell you something. I went from buying the things off of Etsy. It was a real <laughs> sketchy guy from Florida. Yeah. He like sent me the roots that I didn't bury deep enough. Whatever. That was my problem. This time, I bought three giant, like, already grown plants, and then they say in the five years, that's when it's supposed to take off. Well, it's the second year for one, and all the original stalks are dead. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I need this bamboo to take off for my personal well-being. At this I point. don't want to know why, but I mean, my question to you is: How close is the closest neighbor? Like yard? Oh, yard. they're not that close. Okay, because like I told you before, yeah, bamboo is incredibly reproductive and invasive. Yes, and once it takes over, you cannot get rid of it because the root systems underground yes. just keep sprouting bamboo all yes. over the neighborhood, and then you will be public enemy number one. Well, your parents will be. You'll be long gone. I planted it far enough in our backyard uh-huh. that it would, if it takes over. It goes into like the woods. Okay. It doesn't take over someone's lawn or anything because like that. Because you could have a bamboo forest. I would love every minute of that. Okay. I don't think you understand. I went to the one in Japan. It was a spiritual experience for me. I don't know why I love bamboo so much. I know it's weird, but I just find it to be super peaceful and nice. And I've always wanted it in my own. You backyard. know that once you have a bamboo forest, all of a sudden panda bears will show up. It. I would love that too. Okay. I need that to happen. It would make me the happiest man alive. They eat the stalks. They're so cute when they eat the stalks mm-hmm. too. The specific type of bamboo I grew as well is moso bamboo, which is called giant bamboo, which means that if it takes, we could be seeing some 75 foot uh, bamboo stalks. And there's However, gonna, there's I haven't be... gotten over four feet yet. So there will be some sort of town code violations if that happens. No. You'll see. No. Okay. Because in people's backyards in our area, you could always tell where it is. Right. There's like giant sections. Oh, so of other people green. have this bamboo. Other people have not okay. this specific type of bamboo. Moso bamboo, the one that I bought, I specifically bought because of how high it can grow. But it's acceptable in your community. Again, I checked into the county uh-huh. rules. There 
are no rules okay. for my specific county, and other people in our area have it, and I've always seen it and admired it. You know, you may be the person who the rule is now based on. There's no way, because let me tell you something, there is someone in our development who already has bamboo in their lawn okay. that's taken over. All right. So I'm not public enemy number one. Well, I'm proud to say there was a rule made after, not me directly, but oh indirect. No, when I was in high school, my junior or senior, I think it was my senior year of high school, there was a parking lot, but it wasn't big enough. The school yeah. parking lot was never big enough. There was a lottery for parking spaces. And if you didn't get a parking space, oh, well, mm -hmm. too bad. You're out of luck. So we would park on the side street immediately behind the school that would go all the way down. There were no houses on one side of the street. So we parked all along there. But the neighbors were not having it. They were pissed. And after after probably three or four years of them complaining, they finally put up no parking school day sign. So right our grade after us got screwed. Oh, we were damn. good. We parked there. And then the following year, they put up no parking sign. So wow. That was, I, I, I contributed to the be the cause of that. I've had rule changes because of me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've had two, two or three of them, actually. Wow. Do tell. Yeah. So in high school, I wasn't great at... A lot of things. Um, I pretty much scammed my way through high school. Me too. High yeah. five. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in high school, I didn't get into physics, so you could take marine biology instead. So I did. I took marine biology. There was an extra credit policy. You told you, me this. I didn't understand it. So this was the. It was a dumb policy, and I took advantage of it. You could bring in as many articles as you wanted. Articles and, mean like newspaper clippings? Yes. Okay. Or, I mean, we had internet at the time, so right. I would just type in Sorry. like fish. What's a newspaper? <laughs> I would type in like fish, and then I would just, you had to summarize the article, and you would get one point per article. So I would bring in at least five to ten articles per day, and then all those extra credit points, I would just fail every test like literally i would just put write my name and hand it in and because i would get at least 50 extra credit points a week i basically just passed the entire class and didn't have to take the final because i had that much racked up so why wasn't everyone doing this uh, again no one was thinking like me if there's a loophole i find it and i expose it <laughs> well, don't expose. Well, first take advantage of it, then oh, expose it when you don't need oh, it anymore. I ran that sucker to the ground. They changed it after me. You were only allowed to bring in one article per week because I guess they figured why was people bringing in like uh, just think about it. In one week, I was getting fifty to a hundred extra credit points, and that's just one week. That's insane. Yeah, you would think the teacher would be like, um, something's not right here. I don't think she realized it until we were ta like it was time for finals, and I think she went back to her grade book and saw like. Oh, he got a 32 on this test. <laughs> he like didn't do this homework or he didn't do that homework. And then all of a sudden it was like, but yet he doesn't have to take it because he's like the number one student in the class. By the way, I'm just realizing you, you moved my entire trash pile there and now it's a bigger mess than it was. I don't see it. Underneath your computer, you dragged all my garbage. Yeah, yeah. And now, I needed it. But I had a pile of garbage and now it's strewn everywhere. Eh, whatever. I can really Oh, quick I also had to change... Um, Sorry, just one more. Okay. Um, when I was, I went to three different colleges, mm -hmm. and I transferred at each one. And my goal going into college was always to graduate early. Um, by the time I got to University of Miami, I had taken way more credits. But University of Miami was trying to tell me that no, I did not take this many credits. I printed out an entire booklet that said no, he did take these courses, and had my teachers from past schools also write letters for me. And I got every single credit transferred. They changed that policy afterwards. I was saying some well. schools don't, some schools don't transfer credits. Right? No, yeah. But I made them. So again, if I if I'm told no, I like to say, but how much of like a solid no is it? Because if I could figure out how to sneak my way, and that's why you would be a millionaire on Survivor. Thank you so much, Scotty. Yes. I do, you know, I have to say, I do agree with the fact that you would be wonderful on that show. Thank you. I know that I've ribbed you a lot. Yeah. I should have been wearing my Survivor Needs Andrew shirt today. Thank you. Um, I did see it in my closet. I was going to, but I didn't. But That's fine. At least as long as you still have it. Now um, we're watching Michelle's season, 32, yeah. whatever it is, because we never, I, I, I honestly don't like the show. Yeah. But we started watching it and- I, it's kind of okay. Yeah. Like Cooper was like, "Oh my God, is Caleb dead?" You know, like we, it, it was, it, it was, it, it was. It's okay. It's an okay show, and I think that you would do great on it. I really do Thank because you. you would outsmart and outwit and outlast. I think 
again, not You're to not hype very myself athletic, up. But, you know, but the thing is, yeah. I have stupid strength. Because let me tell you something. Right. This last weekend I went rafting. Guess who's the only idiot rafting in the whole boat? Me. I saw Every you, picture, me. Yeah. that's And that's difficult. By the way, totally side note. Um, in last week's episode of Bowl Chat, yeah. I'm sure some people noticed it was a little Skips. bit choppy. Yeah. There was something wrong with our recording thing over there, and there were glitches in it. So it was skippy right around the Blink-182, Turk-182 explanation part. <laughs> so you may not understand what was going on. I mentioned a Hall & Oates concert, and you didn't hear that. And you know, people were like, why did you cut stuff out? There was also, nothing cut out. That's why the video couldn't be uploaded, because... There's giant splotches in between that to cut it, it's just annoying. So you had all the all the video, but not all the audio. Yeah. Okay. So I have to cut it at specific parts, and then it's resyncing your voice every time, and it's annoying. Got it. But, so, you know, this one, new day, new bowl chat. Sure, let's see if this one works. I see it's still rolling, but I don't know. It could be jumping. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I hope one day you make it onto a game show. Um, Another game show, because I know well, you've made it. I, I got an email to audition for Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> Ooh. Which that would be my show. I, that would be I again. If you're saying that I would win Survivor, you would win Supermarket Sweep. I think Amy and I would be a great team on Supermarket Sweep. Yeah, um, because we know what the expensive stuff is. People buy dumb stuff that's not really like we could buy lots of little things that are expensive. People mm-hmm. throw the big ham hocks and giant things that are detergent, big and they mistake. waste all their space. Go down the health and beauty aid aisle. That stuff. 10 15 20 dollars a package or box and you can throw I think a clear sill is like 15 bucks. Yeah, I, well no it's not, but I get it what you're saying. Um <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Scott. No mm-hmm. problem. I don't I don't know. I just I never there must be some kind of rules that we don't know about because people just like grab one thing. Like I would take my arm and just go like this and take mm-hmm. the entire shelf of health and beauty aids because that's where all the expensive oh, stuff is. That's like my one of my biggest dreams in life would be to like get like a shopping spree someplace. Uh-huh. I oh. Like they, a couple of years ago, so there was that Y100 shopping event yeah. that the show did, the morning show did, um, and the person they said went to the mall and just literally put their arm out and like was just taking entire shelves. Yeah, that's the way to do it. You don't just go, hmm, would I like this? No, when you're when it's a time limit, you grab what you can and worry about it afterwards. The closest I got to that was when the Toys R Us in Times Square was still here, yeah. and Elvis would let us do the Toys for Tots thing. Uh-huh. That truly, I so like, much fun, right? had some childhood like glee because that was legit going into a toy store seeing an entire thing of dolls and then being like well this is about like you know two hundred dollars done (laughs) into the cart that was so much fun it's always fun when you're using someone else's money yes yeah truly Mm -hmm. nothing better Oh, love that. Okay. Well, that store's gone, and now it's a Krispy Kreme, I think, right? No, it's a Gap. It's a Gap. That's a Gap? I think it's a Gap now. There's a Ferris wheel in the I don't gap. know if the Ferris wheel's still there. I hope there's not. What I'm not they, sure. What, what, Jeans. Yeah, I was thinking that. Khakis. <laughs> boxer shorts. That'd be socks. Too big of a gap. Yeah, I don't think they took the whole store. I mean, Times Square could pretty much just. They divvied ugh. it up. I oh, Times Square was too much for me. It still is too much for I me. I haven't been up that way in quite some time. We, Eh. Um, and, and not that I'm frightened, but I'm just, it sucks because we're moving up toward that way next year. Yeah. Right. The radio stations are. And I don't know, man. I don't like Midtown. There, I said it. I just don't like Midtown. I like it down here. It's quiet. You could go for a walk and it's like calm. Up there, it's like you open, like you get out of the studio and it's going to be just pandemonium. I don't mind being there, but the parking is ridiculous. There's oh. so many people. It's just, ugh. I, I don't, Holidays I, I don't, like, are going to be terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't mind the tumult so much. It's just that it's a pain in the ass what getting did you say there. The tumult? Tumult. What's that? Well, I mean, I guess it's derivative from tumultuous, huh. which is like oh, craziness. <laughs> it's craziness. Oh. You know, it's just a lot going on. Hmm. That's tumultuous. Oh. And it's just, I don't know. Down here is nice, but there's also not a lot going on, which is okay, but there's nowhere to eat. I mean, there are places to eat. Let me... The New York is full of places to eat, but like when we want to order breakfast at six thirty in the morning, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of choices down here right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know. Whatever. But it's just more chains up there. I'm fine I mean, with there's chains. There's also great restaurants too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm okay with chains. Listen, favorite chain restaurant, go. Like not fast food, but not casual food. dining. Yes. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have to say California Pizza Kitchen. You are a CPK Stan. Well, just because I'm elite. Mm. You know, and I just retained my. Do you know my... what Stan is, by the way? It's just a guy that, it's just a, an average Joe. No. No. Not even close. Okay. A Stan, do you remember the Eminem song Stan? Yeah. 
so do you know how that was like a crazy obsessed psycho fan? Yes. That's what a stan is. Oh, I'm not a crazy obsessed psycho fan. No, no, no. CPK. But you're a CPK stan, meaning like that's your favorite. So it could be used interchangeably. Well, I mean, I like Cheesecake Factory a lot. Oh, say no more. A Grand lot. Lux Cafe. I need to get there Grand too. Grand Lux is fantastic. They're sister restaurants, I believe. Yes, and I've never been to that one. Uh, Seasons 52 also oh, is- Oh, say uh, no more. But there are not a lot of those around. And Seas- that's that's a sister with- Well, it was Red Lobster, but it's not- what? I don't think it is- No, it was a sister restaurant of Red Lobster, but then they spun off the Red Lobster, and it's not anymore. Seasons 52 is a spinoff of Red Lobster? No, 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 no. It was the same company for- It was Darden. It's Darden Group, but Darden got rid of Red Lobster. So, what? Uh, so, okay, there are so big companies that own- 52? I believe it's still Darden, but Darden got rid of Red Lobster. Which also owns what? Uh, this, don't put me on the... F- Chili's, maybe? No. Is it Chili's? Wow. No, it's Bahama Breeze. There's a... There's oh, a f- yeah. I love Bahama Breeze. There's a, few, there's a few of them that Darden is... The Darden umbrella. I forget what they are. It's, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's Chili's. Bahama Breeze is a very underrated chain. Well, there aren't too many of them around. I don't think I've ever... The one time we wanted to go, they went out of business. Oh, the black bean burger at... Bahama Breeze is so freaking good. And they also have the fish bowl drinks that you could split with friends. I don't think you can anymore, COVID. But before that, their black bean burger is delicious. Okay. I think Olive Garden is Darden also. Mm. But See that one? Not a fan. Went once. Me too. Never need to go Me again. Me too. Amy and I went once or twice. And we're like, no. this stuff is frozen. It's just not It's not it's, good. Even the breadsticks are okay, but they're not. Spe- the Cheddar Bay Biscuits at, at Red Lobster, that's the worth stuff it. right there. Worth it. And, don't, and the mix in the store is nothing even close to it. I haven't done that one. Yeah, don't. It's not even, yeah. Okay. Chili's will always be my, like, one of the favorites. Houlihan's also really Hello, good. Hello, baked potato soup. From where? Hula hands. I've never had that. Shut the hell up. That's a staple there. It's That's good? like not getting spinach dip at Houston's. What's the matter with I you? I don't even know what Houston's is. I have to go. What's Houston's? What? What's Houston's? We've been there. We have? Yeah. When? Houston's is fall off the bone ribs, spinach artichoke dip. I've Holy never hell. been to Houston's. Well, in the with city, you. it's called Hillstone. It's Hillstone Group, and they own Hillstone, and Houston's is. I've never been to Houston's. Trust with me, you. when you were in Florida, you, you've been to Houston's. As a show, we went to Houston's. I promise you on everything in my life. Okay. I have not been to Houston's. I would like to go. That's fine. If you have a Houston's or a Hillstone near you, mm-hmm. go and get the spinach dip. Even if it's 50 miles away, go and get it. <laughs> I was never a spinach artichoke fan. Me neither. And until now all I of a sudden, that. I'm like, I can't stop. Know who makes a good one? Don't even tell me. They don't. Costco. No. Costco makes a delicious one. Okay. It's really good. But I will say that nothing compares to Houston's. I've had plenty of other spinach artichoke dips that were all copies of Houston's, by the way, but nobody's is like theirs. And we went to the, the night that they closed, New Year's Eve in like 2018, mm-hmm. they had a, there was one at Roosevelt Field Mall out by me, and we somehow got in on New Year's Eve. It, like, and people were pissed because it was the last night they were open and everybody wanted to be there. And there were guys yelling. I felt so bad yelling at the hostess and the servers and screaming, cursing, bloody murder. But we got in and uh, it was a very sad night. That's interesting. And this is why I wish we could have callers on this show. Because I would love to know as a server, not a server, um, a host. A host or hostess, yes. Can mm, you hostess. be a little... Cupcakes. Can you what? be a little flexible like meaning, if uh, do you have some tables on standby? I feel like that they you do. Could, on your touch screen thing, be like, boop, 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 boop. and then all of a sudden, like people could just walk in. You mean for VIPs like you? I mean, I was a host. Yeah. I was a host at a Japanese restaurant for two weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a job. Everybody in high school had a job except me, and so I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a job. Started off saying that I had wait uh, waiter experience. I didn't, so they quickly learned that, and they kept me on as a host, and then I was like, I actually am going to need to take off the next month, because, you know, it's my senior year of high school. Never came back. Never went back. You, as a waiter, would remind me of that video I showed you from Sesame Street. Remember the chef that stood at the top of the steps with all the cakes? Six lemon meringue pies, and then he would go... Six, five, four, three, two, one, you know, and he would fall down the steps. I, this is going to be disgusting, but I'm going to admit to it anyway. When I would pick up the miso soup... I didn't have... Your thumb was in it, wasn't it? Yes. Ugh. It was. I was a bad waiter. I didn't know how to like... I, I just wasn't good. It just wasn't good for me. And the, being being a host was fun because I still got to use the computer. I just wanted to use the computer and input orders. I like that. I, I get it. The only food service I was ever in is I worked in a bagel store. And I think I've been through this story on here and so I don't need to tell it again. But I worked in a bagel store. Mm-hmm. That's all. I baked bagels. That's all I got. I always thought bagels, I didn't know they were deep fried or fried. Um, they're not. Boiled, they're, boiled, they're boiled, boiled. That's it. 
They're boiled, and then most pla- if you do it right, I thought they were fried. They're boiled. That was it. Fried? Yeah. I don't know why. Just it, it was it was a me thing. Don't okay. Worry. Yeah. No, they're they're <laughs> boiled in a big vat of hot water where you get many many burns mm. uh, in your face, especially when you put your face over it. You're not supposed to do that. Mm. And um, yeah. So we would bake one side of them and then put the toppings on because it would stick to the side that was like still a little bit mm-hmm. wet and then put them back in flip them over that's yeah okay yeah just saying into it okay i love bagels yeah, I, love I don't bagels like, so you know much. and i don't like everything seasoning that has salt cuz sometimes it's too salty same yeah some places make it both ways yes which seems like a lot of effort but yeah. it, it, good <laughs> new york and new jersey really do have the best bagels like bar none new york New Jersey. New York. The place by me legit has the best bagels I've ever had in my life. Okay. Well, you haven't had Long Island bagels then. I have when I was in the Hamptons, not Hamptons, Greenport area. Nah, not out there. Remember when I used to bring you Bagel Boss bagels and you were like, oh, mm, everything. Oh, the and strawberry just... cream cheese though. Yeah. Next time I come in, can you bring those? I guess. I have to get up a little bit earlier and drive a little bit further, but yes. for you, I'll do it. I get you coffee, so sometimes yeah. when I come in. Yeah, but you don't have to get up earlier to get me coffee. Yeah, You I just do. have to add it to the order. Oh wow! So you're making it seem like I do nothing. Didn't say that, hmm. but I like I have to set my alarm 15 minutes earlier, and then I have to go in because there's only like one person working at four o'clock in the morning, and I have to hope that there's not some big slob there ordering 18 sandwiches. Yeah, can I get a bacon? Uh, <laughs> and and all, oh no way! And also, and I'm like, oh god, I just want one thing. Well, I've been trying to go to Krispy Kreme in Jersey City that opens at 5 a.m. It opens at 5 a.m. I've been there. In the five o'clock hour before. I don't know what's been going on, but every time I go to get these Krispy Kremes for Nate, because he's requesting Krispy Kremes, I get there and the guy looks at me. He's literally just tootling around on the inside, doing absolutely nothing in the five o'clock hour there and puts up six o'clock. And then I point to the door that says five o'clock and then he says six o'clock. Why does your door say five? Why does online say five? Why can I place an order on the thing? And then you're closed. But in his defense, they're probably short-staffed. He could be the baker, not the seller. You know, so, I, I, yeah, you're right. If it says 5, they should open at 5. I totally get it. When I opened a store, I, get there at I like was there earlier. I Yeah. Like, I'm not getting there at the crack of dawn. Maybe I should be there. Although, that would be kind of terrifying. Me standing outside with him yes. walking in. Hey, can I get some donuts? <laughs> I'm sure it's happened. And, you know, back to my uh, 17 sandwiches guy. Mm-hmm. Like, thank God for the Duncan app this is not an ad but <laughs> when we have ads <laughs> i would leave my i would leave my house at 6 at 4:10 in the morning leaving myself an extra 2 minutes cuz normally i leave at 4:12 and you know i would go to the dunkin and i would just medium milk and sugar and it would take me uh, 30 seconds pay whatever and i would just pray that there wasn't that guy in front of me that's ordering like you know, four yes. English muffins, bacon egg oh. and cheese and can oh can i also get a culotta and uh, make this one like i'm like Mine will literally take 15 seconds for the guy to do, and there's one person working, and it's so frustrating, and I just leave and have no caffeine for the morning. I mean, that, to me, also is why I'm not a big Starbucks fan. I feel like Dunkin', again, not an ad, hashtag, we we still don't have sponsors. Good enough. Um, um, But I feel like at a Dunkin', what am I getting? Coffee. Simple. Plain and simple. Like, maybe you'll spice it up. They have some cold foam, but you're not going there for, like... Some chai, mocha. Not really. They're uh, they're trying. Syrupy. They're trying, but they no. try. But yeah. again, it's just a quick pump, and it's like, yeah. take it. Yeah. Starbucks is like, can I have an iced juju bean, uh, coconut <sighs> milk with like a sprinkle of graham cracker? Also, can it be like with skim foam? No, no, no. A splash of almond milk. Oh yes, a splash, yeah. as yes. you like to say. No, I don't like to say. Oh yeah, well a splash, which yeah. I also despise that word as well. Um, but yeah, it takes forty six hours, and then what do I get? A, a seventeen dollar coffee. Brew. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I hate it. It's uh, Starbucks is not my thing. I, they do have this yogurt thing that I like. Oh yeah, it's you like do with like berries. the berries. Yeah, it's got berries and, and yeah. almonds and coconut and stuff. And I looked at the nutrition facts. Should probably not have that, <laughs> or maybe once in a long while, especially <laughs> since right now, Andrew. Go ahead and make fun of me. I'm not, because I did a juice cleanse. But I started Slim Fast yesterday. Uh, great. And I've done it probably, I don't know, five times in my entire life. I yeah. remember doing it in high school one time. It was old school with big, heavy metal cans Ooh, and boy. a pull tab on it. Remember I those? remember the Slim Fast yeah. cans. That was oh, that was Tommy Lasorda days. Who? Yes, um, who? <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I do it every, every 
I don't know, five to 10 years Mm -hmm. and I'll bang off like six to 10 pounds in in two weeks. And uh, I look, I just want to get out of the club. I need to get out of the 200 club again. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I started, I was 203. This morning I was 202. Amazing. So if I go down a pound a day, that'd be spectacular. You know, shake for breakfast, shake for lunch and a sensible dinner. But you and also a snack forgot or two. to see, yeah. Well, no, you're you're allowed two snacks. It uh, says it on there. I know. So this morning I had a Cliff Bar. That was a snack. That's fine. Protein bar. It's okay. Yeah. And I'll have uh, you know a big cup of cherries when I get home. Yeah, that's great. Or a nectarine. I'm supporting you during. Or this perhaps journey. if I want some fuzz, I'll have a peach. I'm <laughs> I'm supporting you in this journey. You know what I haven't had you know. yet this whole summer? What? A plum. I love plums so much. I love plums too. But every time I go, first of all, like they say red plums. But I don't think they mean the flesh, because I like red, red, red. Like, I want the flesh to be red. The yellow yeah. ones are okay, but I love when it's red inside. The deep red, sweet, yeah. love that. Again, the problem is I eat these foods, and then I notice- My throat closes up. It really does. You could ask Jackie, the last time I had a plum, we were playing a board game, and my eyes, by the end of it, were like this. And I was like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. I'm just going to go to bed. And it's the same way whether it's regular hydrated fruit or dehydrated fruit. Doesn't matter. Dehydrated fruit just makes it a little scratchy. If I actually, like if you had a plum right now, and even if you washed it, I don't do well with the skin. Ever. How about a prune? I don't know if I've ever had a prune. No? I, I don't know. Do you know what a prune is? No. It's a dried plum. Yeah, I don't think I've had a prune. Okay. I mean, it's notorious for making old people poop. That's what, yeah. you know, well, not old people, but... I if, had prune juice when uh, I was having some digestive issues yeah, yeah, yeah. years ago. Yeah, I mean, I guess prunes are associated with old people, but you, you don't have to be old to eat them. Which They're is, a fun snack anyway. They make them even in single-serve packages. Have you seen those? No. Sunsweet ones. Yeah, they they're, they're come in little individually wrapped prunes that you just throw in your bag and take with you. A to-go prune? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, I also like figs. Love figs. I am not a fan of figs. I don't like fig spread or fig jelly or fig anything. Well, I don't even like fig newtons. Our family farm in Italy, they like make figs. They make them? They, well, the trees do. Oh. <laughs> so they have fig farms. Right. Um, and then my Nona does like this special thing with the figs. And when we get them, oh my God, they're so freaking good. What does she do with them? I, she, I don't know what she does with these, but she'll like come over with like a bag of figs. That are, I don't know, maybe she like can't, I don't know if she candies them, something, but they are delicious. Let me backtrack for a second. I say I don't like figs. Mm -hmm. I've really never tried anything with fig just because I don't, I think I don't like it. I think I don't like it. Well, like for example, so again, not sponsoring this, but we've been making the HelloFresh meals. Yeah. And there's one that is chicken with fig balsamic sauce or something like that. Delicious. To me, see, first of all, I I don't like balsamic. I that I know, but the fig Same. may cancel it out. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't. I, I maybe I'll just try it and suck it up. I have a giant aversion to vinegar. Me too. I hate the smell of vinegar. Me too. I hate the taste of vinegar. Yeah. I can always sense it. And I hate it so so much. Not a vinegar I just, fan. Ugh, I hate when people clean with white vinegar. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't know. I can walk into a room and immediately just walk right out. I just can't do it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just can't. I'm with you. Yeah. Not I got good. It. But I and I, I just don't like balsamic on salad. I, I need a creamy dressing for the most part. Yeah. The only dressing that doesn't have to be creamy is is um, there's a Caesar dressing that Pfeiffer makes. Is it Pfeiffer? Yeah. I don't even know if that company's still in business. But it was a salad dressing company, Pfeiffer, and they had Caesar and it wasn't creamy. Hmm. It was like almost Italian-y, oily with like stuff in it. I just do olive oil and salt. If I don't have anything on good. salad, yeah, I'm a ranch or, or Caesar. Yeah, Caesar yeah. is always good. I love Greek salads though. Mm, oh my god, see no feta or olives for me, so I'm out. Big mistake, huge, big, huge, huge, huge. I also don't like it. What that mean? I know I don't like. I've tried both and I don't like it. Oh, them. feta, I think is oh one of the best cheeses. People say everything's better with it, but it ain't. Let me tell you something. When it's hot, no, and you put honey on it, oh my god, feta, goat cheese. I don't like any of that stuff. Ever since Blue I found out I was Greek, I feel a closer connection to feta cheese, and I think maybe that's why I like it so much. Yeah, I remember one time when I first started eating creamy dressings, mm-hmm. and I liked ranch. Um, I was at a place that we don't have any ranch left, but we have blue cheese, and I was like, okay. She's like, it's the same thing. <laughs> I said, okay, it's not the same thing. I don't like blue cheese dressing. I don't like blue cheese crumbles. I don't like any of that. Yeah, blue cheese Morganzola, is the one that. Oh nope. God, blue Brie, cheese is nope. the one. Oh no, no, 
nope. this podcast can end right now yeah. because you will not speak on Brie's name like that. Brie is a phenomenal cheese. Everything about Brie is so freaking good. I'm actually getting the huzz talking about it. No. I don't like it. I might go home, go to the local cheese shop, and go buy some Brie because it's that good. Speaking of cheese, a friend of ours just had a half wheel of Pecorino Romano. Is it Pecorino Romano? I guess. Yeah. A Parmigiano, oh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Parmigiano Reggiano imported from Italy yeah. through some cheese importer. Yeah. And we got a two pound hunk of it. Yeah. Holy Our family hell. used to do this I mean, all the time. I've had it before. I'm, this is not new to me, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's so good yeah. that you just sit and eat hunks of it. Yeah. That might be my sensible snack today. Is that sensible? It is. Actually, okay. cheese is a big one. Cheese is pretty good. If you just they, That's why they make them in the grocery store, the little cheese snack packs. Yeah. They're real. It's not bad for you. You think it's bad for you. I don't then, think it's bad for me. I love oh, cheese. Have you ever done- uh, You know what? Right now, I have the hanker for a hunka. I can't. You don't know what I'm talking about. Hunk, hunka- Bunk of crunch? No. It was a commercial. It was a, like a PSA I've from the 80s. It. A hanker for a hunk of cheese. Uh, Remember yes. that guy? The cheese wheel guy? I do, actually. It was always on during like, um, what the hell was that show? Uh, why can't I think of it? It's just a bill on Capitol Hill. Um, oh. Um, um, uh, school of uh, uh, Rock. Schoolhouse, schoolhouse Rock. Rock. Yeah. It was always a commercial during Schoolhouse Rock because I think the same animator that made the Hanker for a hunk of guy was the Schoolhouse Rock uh, oh. uh, animator. Huh. So it, it looked very similar. Go figure. That was a fun time for PSAs and commercials and stuff. Smokey Bear. They don't do them anymore. And uh, Woodsy Owl. Remember yeah. those guys? They give don't, a hoot. Don't pollute. I do, actually. You give a hoot? I do. Okay. I don't pollute. That's good. They don't do PSAs anymore. Now, if they do, they're just like, they do, is but your not child like that. vaping? They're going to die. Yeah. It's a, they, don't, they don't do fun stuff no. anymore. No. Cartoons, I feel like, nah, cartoons probably don't really make the point, but. No, they do because I remember them. Yeah. As a kid, you remember that stuff. True. Be like me, plant a tree. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, are you going to put honey on your Parmesan? Okay, see, here's now, I love honey. Yeah. But I think that's weird. Have you ever done it? I haven't. Scotty, I'm telling you, Parmesan and honey is truly one of the most iconic collaborations. I just put it on a Trisket. No. Oh, oh, oh even better. Because you get the saltiness of the Trisket, the, the little bit of salty from the Parmesan. I do the light salt, though. I, I do the lightly salted one. Scotty, please. Pinch of salt. <laughs> please, when you go home, do yourself a favor. Parmesan, Trisket, a little bit of honey. I don't think I don't think all that is a sensible snack. It is. Yeah? Yes. Honey isn't doing anything bad. I love Honey I, is a natural sweetener. Andrew, I will open up the cabinet and I, take the honey bear and just drink it. I'll I love pour honey. it into my mouth. Please, 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 please promise me you'll have a Trisket with Parmesan and honey today. Okay. Please. Yes. Uh, I will. Yes. It sounds weird, but I'll try it. It's so good. I'm, I'm trying to get the taste in my mouth right now, and it's just a weird It's like a salty, sweet sensation. combo. But the cheese doesn't fit in there. Yes, it does. That's the salty. No, the Trisket's the salty. The cheese is also salty. Okay. It's good. That cheese has a little bit of a crunch to it, too, which is weird. What is Uh, crunching? What is in that cheese that's crunching? I feel like maybe... It's been explained to me what it is before. It's the age or something. I don't know. Basically, once you figure out the cheese is just mold. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's all the... That's cool. It's all the same. We really (laughs) talked about a whole lot of nothing here. We talked about cheeses. We talked about chain restaurants. Mm Mm-hmm. What else did we talk about? Slim Fast. Slim Fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This was a fun episode. Okay. I just think it was just okay, but that's fine. Oh, that reminds us. Are you t-shirts. poo-pooing on a podcast no. in the middle of recording the podcast? We don't have any bowl chat t-shirts, but we do have Serial Killers t-shirts available right now. If you go to SerialKillersPC.com, click on the merch store. Yes. It's a very, very limited run. Yes. Like literally 48 shirts is yes. all we had made. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can get one now before they're gone. And who knows if they go out, maybe we'll restock with fun new shirts soon, like a hashtag Team Andy or hashtag... Team Scott shirt. I'm not sure about that, but um, I don't know. I, I think so. I, I don't know if they listen to this podcast, but thank you, Rose and Serial Bros. Yes. Because they each bought one, and you guys are awesome. You're the first two. Yay. So thanks. Woo. Uh, anything else, Andy? Um, no, I think that's it for me. Okay. Thank you for listening to Bowl Chat, the sister podcast to Serial Killers. That's the podcast where we eat and talk about cereal. Yes. Make sure you listen every Monday for... Serial killers and every Wednesday for bowl chat. When we remember to do it, because we almost didn't have this one. No, this one did. almost didn't happen. Yeah, it did. Okay. I came in 
with like at five o'clock this morning with the hopes that I was going to record after 10. It's never me, always you. And again, this is a fresh episode as we recorded it yesterday. Fresh out the oven. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thank you for listening to Bowl Chat. I'm going to go over here and get the bowl so we can clink away. How long was this episode? Uh, well, 35 minutes, but there might also be some glitches in the middle. So if it's not 34 and change right now, then there might have been a glitch. We have to figure out how we can get people to like call in or something. Because I feel like when we were talking about chain restaurants, I would have loved to have like picked up a phone and said, hey, what chain restaurant do you like? Well, maybe they can DM us their phone number and a topic. Yes. And we can call them on it. I love that. Okay, that's TBD. We're, yeah. we're going to figure this out. Because we got to figure the phones out. It wasn't working last time. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening to Bowl Chat. Until we see you on Monday and then again on Wednesday, say clink, Andrew. Clink! Clink. <laughs> oh, this is our Lenny Mud Bowl, by the way. Oh. Ah. Yeah, see, look. Lenny Mud USA. Huh. So, Handmade. Yeah. Still waiting on them to get those serial killer bowls. Yeah. This one says, you rule. You're brilliant. You're incredible. Everyone loves you. I'm legit about to pee in my pants. I'm legit about to pee in my pants. I gotta go. Okay.